Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrac. I'm Mikey G, and it's Wednesday, October 12th. A Tesla semi-truck was spotted seemingly broken down on a highway on-ramp in Northern California. Since Tesla unveiled the truck in 2017, only about half a dozen Tesla semi-prototypes were spotted in the wild. The vehicles were spotted all around the USA, as Tesla was testing them extensively. But now, for the first time, one of them seems to be broken down on the side of the road. A truck driver posted the video last week of the semi on the Han ramp, and it shows on social media that it occurred in Fremont, California. We recently reported that Tesla has been building a Tesla semi service team, which includes mobile service technicians, presumably for situations exactly like this. Tesla is reportedly going to implement a new vehicle hazard warning system through partnership with Emergency Safety Solutions Incorporated, the creator of the Hazard Enhanced Location Protocol. This system utilizes a multi-prong approach which improves hazard lights and also notifies nearby vehicles that there is a disabled vehicle ahead through cellular devices. Today, the company announced the new hazard warning system is expected to be pushed through an over-the-air software update to a range of Tesla vehicles. Tesla has updated its in-car energy app to give a comparison between real energy use and the projected range, and it even gives you range advice on how to get closer to that optimal number. Tesla has been a leader in efficiency and long-range electric vehicles for quite a long time, but despite that, it still has issues predicting the energy consumption of a trip. Tesla has been steadily improving on the prediction feature for some time, and now a new update is ready to show off the latest improvements to the calculator. The new app gives more detailed description on how and when you are deviating from the projected range and gives range tips to get closer to the optimal. Tesla's new energy app also now breaks down energy consumed from more sources, including century mode and screen time. It reports these as being consumed in miles, which really does cut to the chase. After months of anticipation, Polestar has finally pulled off the sheet on their first ever electric SUV, called the Polestar 3. Let's go over a list of specs. For the long-range dual-motor trim, the Polestar 3 has 489 horsepower, 620 pound-feet of torque, 0 to 60 in 4.9 seconds, a top speed of 130 miles an hour, a 400-volt battery architecture, nominal battery pack of 111 kilowatt hours, with up to 300 miles of range on the EPA cycle. DC fast charging is up to 250 kilowatts, and the starting MSRP is $83,900. This SUV features a wealth of features, including Microtech upholstery, animal welfare certified leather, and fully traceable wool upholstery. The SUV's operating system is Android Automotive, with NVIDIA Drive Core Computer serving as the AI brain. Infotainment will be powered by Qualcomm's Snapdragon cockpit. Initial production of the Polestar is expected to begin at the Volvo Cars facility in Chengdu, China, beginning in mid-2023. The first deliveries are expected in the fourth quarter of 2023, about one year from now. Eventually, the company aims to manufacture the vehicle here in the USA to qualify for the federal tax credit. You can find more photos and a lot more details at electrek.co. Ahead of the full financial report, which is coming next month, Lucid Motors has shared more optimistic production numbers for the third quarter, indicating a substantial ramp-up compared to the previous. Lucid has had a shaky start in EV production, overcoming many obstacles on their path towards profitability. According to its recent press release, production of 2,282 vehicles commenced in the third quarter, which is more than triple based on the previous second quarter. Now, based on the latest tallies, Lucid believes that it is on track to achieve its revised production goal of 6 to 7,000 vehicles for 2022. We will learn more details beyond just production numbers during the third quarter earnings call, which is on November 8th. Toyota is in the EV hot seat after a constellation of comments were made by various executives. Less than two months ago, the executive vice president of sales at Toyota Motor North America said he didn't think that electric market was ready for electric vehicles, citing high costs and the lack of charging infrastructure. Then two weeks ago, Toyota's CEO told reporters that it would stick with the hybrid strategy. And now, Sean Hanley, the vice president of sales and marketing at Toyota Motor Australia, has something to add. The executive said that in the battle against climate change that carbon is the enemy and not a car's drivetrain going on to state that Toyota has played a role in emissions reduction with hybrid sales. He even attached a numerical value to Toyota's hybrid efforts, 
saying, quote, the 300,000 hybrids we've sold so far are equivalent to the CO2 reduction effect of introducing approximately 90,000 electric vehicles to the market. Now stay tuned where you will hear an opinion piece on Toyota's executive statements. A new battery belt is emerging in the United States as automakers from around the globe are racing to meet the overwhelming demand for fully electric vehicles. A new research report from the Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas highlights the significant investments that automakers are pouring in, particularly in the Midwest and in the Southwest. Sorry, Southeast. <laughs> Midwest and Southeast. The report states, quote, Since the start of 2021, more than 15 new facilities or expansions have been disclosed in the U.S., reflecting a potential investment of at least $40 billion. In a recent interview with German media, William Li, who is the CEO of Chinese car company NIO, spoke on the company's plans for Europe and the USA. And regarding the U.S., he said, quote, We only become active in a market when we have the right product and the right services for this region. And we plan to have also become active in the USA by the end of 2025. But the U.S. government recently passed the Inflation Reduction Act, making it harder for foreign automakers to produce and enter the market. We will therefore monitor developments closely. Also on the subject of the American market, the Chinese CEO spoke about Elon Musk, saying that he, William Lee, writes his posts on Facebook that are much longer than Elon Musk's small tweets. And the CEO also said that he is a better dancer than Elon Musk. And I, for one, would love to see that battle take place. Compared to Tesla's Autopilot and Nissan ProPilot, the IIHS has found that GM Super Cruise drivers are the most likely to engage in distracted driving behaviors. The study was based on a survey of drivers who were asked to self-report on which driving activities they had performed and felt safe performing while using partially automated driving software. Nissan ProPilot drivers were statistically the least likely to engage in distracted driving tasks, and Super Cruise drivers were the most likely. The IIHS mentions that this is still very early data and wrought with complexities, principally that it was self-reported. Regardless of the system, the IIHS reminds drivers to be aware and cautious while using assistance software. Okay, it is opinion time, and by golly, it seems that Toyota has been taking up all the opinion time these days. It's clear to me that there is a company culture within Toyota, at least in the higher portion of the higher levels, that opposes the fully electric cars as if they are beneath them. It's really strange to me. Some have said that Toyota's problem is the conservative president or CEO, Aikio Toyota himself. If indeed that's the case, then he has made quite the impact on the company culture at large. Something that really verbs my noun is when I got a sense of entitlement from the recent statement that Toyota in all their heavenly glory has already graced the world with their hybrid presence for all this time. I got the impression that he wanted to hear a thank you and, you know, just speaking for myself, I'm sorry to say that Toyota got all the thank yous that they could handle with incredible sales for 20 years or more. If the company was a person, then it would seem that the success has gone to their head. By the way, in today's community comment, Ariel Ernesto Diaz says, Great channel, man. Thank you very much, Ariel. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.